Hello everyone. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome to the a and have one identical like this, raw. Yeah. Got it from Sullivan. Yeah. John Sullivan. He's a good uh, air expert. Yeah. What's the backstory on that? He says they're kind of common. It's a split planchet, and I, like I said, I have one identical, same year and everything. Yeah. Wow. I got it on so, eBay right so now. now. So you, now you think you're not crazy, right? It's like, <laughs> I gotta go. take it off eBay. Yeah. I love that grainy look to the front. I know. It still has that design peeking through to it. Yeah. And see this lift here? That bubble like? Mine has the same thing. Wow. Awesome. And here, this is pretty cool. For the money especially. Oh, wow. Full bell lines. Does that color on the rim? Yeah. I look for the uh, Bugs Bunny. Because yeah. every one, every year has one. You know that, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's just that uh, almost like a interesting thing to the face. Yeah. Like a, it's different. Some with the nose, the booger. Yeah. yeah. Those are tough to find. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks for showing us, man. Sure, man. How's the show been so far? Wonderful. You bought some stuff. Can't complain. Yeah, we did. We're gonna be showing you later. Who have you bought from so far? Chris is uh, coins and collectibles. Uh, what's David Tynes? Black Eagle. Eagle. Black Eagle coin from uh, Idaho. Rarity 7. Rarity 7. Uh, uh, South Brooklyn group, uh, group, pretty much. Yes, and then what's uh, Carter's? Uh, Patriot coins. Yeah. Patriot coins. So. Excited to show you all that. Yep, should be good. Very excited. All right, guys, so I want to show you a few coins from the show. Uh, the first one is this 1879S, reverse of 78. So, beautiful San Francisco luster on the coin. It looks like a 61, but the luster really carries it to a 2. Um, what people love about these is that it has a flat uh, breast feathers on the reverse, which is the reverse of a 78, but the date is a 79, which is great. Um, we ended up buying that from a subscriber who was walking around the show and said, hey, I want to show you some cool stuff. I'm like, great. So we bought that from him. Here's one of my favorites from the whole show, an absolutely stone cold original $17.99. Um, it's great XF45. We ended up buying two of these. This one we felt like had more originality and uh, was graded more accurately. And um, I don't know, I think this coin really has a great shot at CACing. I'm going to add more photos to the video so you guys can understand and appreciate what I'm talking about. Man, I'm just in love. We bought this one from DFW Coin. They were actually setting out gold coins in their case. And I said, hey, did you bring anything else? And he said, I got a bunch of crap in a box. And I said, well, let me look at that. And he had two $17.99 in XF45. So this one is awesome. And then we have one from Rarity7, Noah and his team. They're the best. And we wanted to showcase one coin they sold us. This is an 1877 Carson City seated half dollar. As original as you can get it, super beautiful. We're not gonna make a lot of money on this stuff, but if we we're happy to sell someone a coin and they love it in the end, that's what's most important. And uh, I think he just got this one back from CAC. I watch a lot of his CAC type of content. If you guys like CAC videos, follow his Instagram, which is Numismatac or Rarity7. And uh, he just breaks down some coins, shows you why he thinks it's stickered, why he thinks it doesn't sticker. And we can really learn a lot about what makes coins exceptional for the grade. And uh, I can't wait to show you guys more coins, but we do have some interviews we want to show you guys, so let's jump into those. Alrighty guys, so we're here with uh, John at DLRC, and he wanted to show us some cool coins from DL Hansen Collection. Which ones do you want to show us, John? Um, I just pulled two random ones because they're all gorgeous. Uh, here at the uh, a, a show, we've we've got on display D.L. Hansen's number one barber half set, um, but we're also featuring a couple of cases here of his uh, number two set that are on sale, uh, that are for sale in our red carpet rarities auction, um, ending uh, in the next several weeks, so keep an eye out on our website. Um, first one I want to show you is a uh, beautiful uh, Proof 68. 1912. It's in a new Cat G holder, which we're really excited about. It's got his own little DL Hansen label. 
Uh, the silver color of the label indicates it's a number two set coin, and the number one set coins will have a gold label. But it's just really like the rainbow tuning on this coin, and especially on the reverse, it just at certain angles, man, it just pops with neon colors. Um, and uh, the obverse has some, when you get it, catch that one at the right angle too, it's just absolutely beautiful. So I just thought, you know, Proof 68, we're uh, right there dancing on the edge of perfection. So it's a pretty neat coin. And this is a number two set coin, so he has a better one. So, um, the other one I wanted to show you was this just absolutely stunning uh, 1892S. And you might say, well, it's only an MS64 CAC, but a 92S is, is a hard coin to come by at this kind of grade level. Uh, it was the first year of issue um, when the San Francisco Mint started, the, started their process of making these. And uh, this coin is kind of special to me because it's pretty much blast white and still CAC approved and graded. So um, that's a combination on more classic coins that is very difficult to find a white coin with a CAC approval or CAC grading approval. So it's just, the luster is just incredible. It has like this kind of ghosting of the uh, uh, reverse eagle on the obverse, which creates that kind of dynamic movement in the luster. Just a wonderful point. And uh, all these are open for bidding on uh, davidlawrence.com. Yeah, what's the time frame for availability to bid on these, John? Um, there are some in this set. We've split the number two set into two um, sections. Uh, one of them ends, um, I believe it's the first week of September, and one is ending, uh, another one's ending September 19th. So I have to go to the website. We just kind of split them up uh, because the value is so great. We don't want to flood the market with, uh, you know, a huge dollar amount all at once in one auction. Whereas if we split it apart several weeks, you know, people can uh, refresh their funds and go back in for another dip. Yeah, so what's... Uh how has the show been for you guys overall? This show, this show has been incredible. We've had a lot of, uh, of uh, potential bidders coming by and actually wanting to see these in hand, and uh, so we've been able to show those. We've sold uh, a box and a half of wholesale coins that we were ready to move on from. We've sold a lot of retail coins here as well, and um, I think we're. Uh, I think we probably spent too much money, but that means the business is good. Yeah, well, I appreciate you showing us everything, John. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, we signed up for a Toyota Corolla, and uh, Routes, a rental car company, gave us uh, this beauty. So, won't be difficult to uh, spot us anywhere in Chicago while we're here. Alrighty guys, we're here with Joe from Beantown Coins and he wanted to show us some cool coins at the Chicago a and What do you want to show us, Joe? Let's start with this guy. This is an 1809 Ceylon 96 Stiver. So we're going back to the time of the uh, East India Company and Britain's colonization of the world. And so Ceylon is modern day Sri Lanka. and. Uh, so when the East India Company was colonizing the area, they were mining right away. They're trying to get resources immediately from the area. And the uh, 96 Stivers was heavily counterfeit, uh, contemporarily, like at the time. So you can find a contemporary counterfeit for this coin as well. And what's fun about them is it's dramatically different. The contemporary counterfeit for this coin looks... Um, uh, so wildly different. It's the same elements. They have the elephant standing, and then the 1809 written below it. But the die—it looks nothing like the dies. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that you've all seen an example like this, because this piece is the correct one. So if you ever run across a 96 Stivers for Ceylon, this is what the dies should look like. Uh, this sort of piece is uh, around $1,800. It's a Pridmore 3 KM79. It's also called a two Rick Stivers. So sometimes when you're looking it up and finding, instead of finding it as a 96 Stivers, it's a two Rick Stivers. Um, but it's a really fun piece as a part of colonial Britain's history and uh, anybody connected to Asia 
uh, usually finds this piece is extremely rare. That's why it's $1,800 in this grade. Wow, yeah. Thank you for showing that one, Joe. You're welcome. What's the this, next one you want to show? This is a Siberian 10 kopeck. So you can often see large 10 kopeck pieces from Russia, uh, but the ones from Siberia have the dog standing around the shield like that, and that's it's also easy to spot. So if you overlook Russian 10 kopecks, as most people do, because they're usually coins that are worth less than $50, they often come corroded. The planchets were always made with a poor kind of copper, so you'll find cracks in planchet flaws. They were easily environmentally damaged. So finding a really nice one, a 10 kopeck in, you know, a mint state problem free is an expensive coin, but you'll encounter them in circulated condition all the time. The Siberian one though is rare, and sometimes you can find it sitting in a lot of other Russian 10 kopecks that are low dollar. So if you can run across this sort of thing and buy it as the regular Catherine 10 kopeck, then you go to school. Uh, this piece is about a $400 piece in this condition. This is a fun piece. So this piece, I'm actually going to take it out of the plastic to really give you the best shot. It's a metal. This metal was originally struck during the American Revolution in Paris to support America because we were really close with France at the time and France was integral in our revolution and our independence from Britain. Um, this, this particular piece was restruck during the Civil War in Philadelphia. So this exact design is available both as a Parisian medal minted for us as revolutionaries and it's available as a Philadelphia mint product. Okay. And this is the one that was struck in 1861. Now 20,000 were struck at the time, but the survival rate on these is extremely low. And this piece would probably be around $1,250. Wow. It has an absolutely gorgeous design on it. And not to mention the connection to Revolutionary War history and Civil War history. Wow. And the timing of its restrike. And on the other side, there's a lovely Latin description. It seems like an extremely fair piece of, you know, numismatic history from where every every other price indicator seems on most other things. You yeah, know? this would fall under the category of Americana. Yeah. And it is often, um, I would put it in the same category as a Libertas metal, which is okay. a very expensive yeah. U.S. because the U.S. only struck so many. Right. That was struck in the U.S during the Revolutionary War, which still makes that one so valuable. Right. But the fact that this one was struck here, restruck here in the Civil War, actually I think makes this one cooler than the original Paris strike, because we have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. What makes this coin very interesting is that it was struck with silver from Lima, Peru. Hmm. Um, there's actually quite a tale on that, and I'm going to uh, give you guys the opportunity to check it out for yourself because it's only on this date. So if you look into the story on the 1746 crown from Lima, you'll find that there's quite an interesting tale of the British government and the way they silver went over to Britain from Lima. Okay. Um, and I don't want to spoil that one. I want to give people a little bit of a... A, a little bit of a history a, lesson. A, a little bit of a rabbit hole to pursue for themselves too. Yeah, and it, I mean, I like the original look to it as well. Yeah. Really so unmessed these, with and... These crowns are, are generally, uh, it's actually easier to find a 1746 than most other dates because of this. But they're all going to be from Lima and they're more expensive because of that. Because these were struck with silver that came from Peru. Right. And you can't really say that about any, a lot of other British coins, considering that Spain had control of the Peruvian Indians. Yeah, wow. So, it's a beautiful piece, great example, and uh, they're highly sought after. Yeah, it's about a $900 coin, it seems that's like. Right, yeah. What's the last coin you want to show us, uh, Joe? That's one of my favorites. This is called a Pezza della Rosa. And uh, there are some examples. This is struck by the Italian city-state of uh, Livorno hmm. because Italy didn't become Italy until in the 1800s. Before that, they were all separate states. So Milan, Venice, they were all different Florence. Rome. Those were all different states, and you've got areas like Tuscany. So all of those were their own, you know, principalities. Essentially, they could make their own money. They ran their own governments, and they were important in treaties, in agreements, war, especially. You know, who'd you get on your side? So it's hard for us in the modern day to sometimes imagine that Italy wasn't one country, but there were so many different countries. There are some examples that we can tie back to the Medici family. 
Okay. Which is one of the things that I love most about this piece. You'll find it's a very difficult one to find. You probably won't find a single one in an easy channel like Amazon or eBay or anything like that. Usually you have to find them in auction. Okay. When they come up. Or from Joe. Or from Joe. <laughs> it's called the Pezza Della Rosa. Well, Joe wanted us to show us his business cards, so show us what we got, Joe. So they all look like this on the obvious, with all the key details that you need to be able to reach me. I'm gonna put that in the description, okay. But watch what I do down here. Every one of them has a different reverse. There are 20 different varieties of these cards. Every time you see me in person at, a sh at my store or at a show, you can pick up a new one. Once you've collected all 20, we give you a prize with $100 in value. Yeah, so where are you guys located, Joe? So we're in St. Petersburg, Florida, at 54th Avenue North. It's your I guess the next major show you guys are going to be at? Pan. At Pan, and then there's one that's local to you guys, I think that you're Collectorama going to be... will be there too. It's oh, in awesome. Lakeland, Florida. Okay, wonderful. And what's the phone number they can reach you at if they have something that uh, they might want to sell you guys? Because I know you guys handle silver U.S. coins, and you also handle bullion, you also handle a there's lot really of world coins. There's really nothing in numismatics that we don't do. We do ancients, we do world, we do tokens and metals and exonumia, like so-called dollars, hard times tokens, all that. We do. Uh, high dollar US and low dollar US, slab or raw. We do uh, jewelry, we do paper money, both world and US. I don't think there's any major category of numismatics that we don't control. That's wonderful. And uh, what phone number can, is the best to reach you at, Joe? You can reach us at 857-294-7820. You can email at joe at beantowncoins.com. You can go to beantowncoins.com and uh, you could also find us on Instagram at BeantownCoins. All right, Joe, what do you want to give us here? All right, I'm going to show you, highlight one more piece right here. This is samurai money right here. This is what a samurai or shogun might have had in their purse for silver. They are made in the finest silver available in the old world. So this was minted in the 1850s or 60s. It's Tempo era. And uh, that would be the end of feudalism in Japan. And these... Uh, these coins were made at 99% pure, 99.1 actually, which is really impressive for the middle of the 19th century. And uh, they uh, come in various different sizes and denominations. This is called an Ichibu Gin, and uh, they retail for right around $50. Um, uh, but we import them directly from Japan because they are occasionally counterfeited and we want to make sure that we get them from a reliable source. So anytime you get Ichibu Gin from us, you know you're getting the real thing. Uh, as you can imagine, they wouldn't be that difficult to fake. But there are a few things like edge markings that are much harder for a counterfeiter to copy. And most importantly, when you're examining one of these, to tell the era, you actually look at the florets, the flowers around the border, and the style of where they were cut in to tell around when this was made. Yeah, There's so no it seems, it seems no like you'd be able to spot those really easily now that you've handled so many of them. Oh, for sure. I mean, and you'll see them right away because they're not round. And there's right. not a lot of coins that you can find that are rectangular. Yeah. So that makes them kind of special. And uh, I would like you to have this one. Man, thank you, Joe. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. You're the man. Hey, guys. I wanted to show you a few more of my favorites from the A&A show. These will be on our website, of course, but we have a 1926 $10. It is a common date, but I just love the design. It does have a slight gold tone to it. It has a really pleasant uh, appearance, both on the obverse and the reverse. And it's got the old green holder, so if you're into holders, that one's for you. Moving on, we have the 1883 Proof Seated Half and Proof 64 Decam. Just a, a blazer, for sure. Wonderful fields. Very clean. Looks great for a 64. Possibly a, a 65, but Cac loved it as well. Let's move on to the next proof half that we have. It's a 1941 Walking Liberty half dollar and proof 65 by PCGS. It's another green holder. And an affordable coin. Very pleasant. I always like... Uh, Proof Walking Liberty half dollars. Moving on to our last coin, we have a 1795 one cent with a plain edge graded by PCGS VF20. Just a, you know, an affordable coin for a person that wants to get into early uh, copper. Just uh, I love the overall look of the coin. Very pleasant brown color. But again, those are a few of the many purchases that we got at. The ANA show, and we look forward to 
presenting them to you on our website, acousticcollectibles.com. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the show, and what we had to share with you guys, and uh, subscribe. More videos coming out every single week. We want you guys to be a part, and we'll see you guys next time.